And let me just tell you, Donald started out a guy that I used to just say hi to in passing. And now I know him as one of the most open-hearted and kind and genuine people on the face of the planet. And it is my pleasure to introduce junior on the football team, STS major, class of 20, Donald Stewart. Good evening, everyone. First off, I would like to thank God, because without him, none of this would be possible. Secondly, I'd like to thank all of my family, my real friends, my coaches, my teachers, your unwavering support has meant the world to me. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about two people who motivate me to be successful each and every day. My younger brother, Justin, and one of my best friends, Dashawn Simpkins. I learned that even though these experiences molded and shaped me to be the person I am today, I still am the architect of my own world. Growing up in New Jersey, me and my peers were exposed to gangs, drugs, and violence. Fortunately for some of us, we were able to receive the opportunity to receive a great education and play in some might say, the best high school football league in the country. Through Coach Partridge and Coach Westervelt, my brother was on the sideline to share some of my most unforgettable moments. Everyone who attended Paramus Catholic High School, we had one mission. That was to beat all odds and make better lives for ourselves as well as our family. Growing up, I'm the oldest in my family. I have two younger twin brothers, Justin and Jordan, the best brothers I could ask for, and my beautiful, amazing little sister, Victoria. And our parents taught us to always stick together no matter what. My younger brother, Justin, was teased, and he was picked on every single day since he's been born. Me and my brother, Jordan, did all that we could to stick up for him. Getting into numerous fights and altercations just to protect our younger brother. Playing sports was simply something to do to get out the house. And I realized later that I found a newfound passion for football as it heightened my relationship with my brother. But I realized the more I excelled in football, the less the people tease my brother. <laughs> Justin is very important to me. And it's crazy because I still remember the day we were in the mall one time and someone peeked into our stroller, my mom's stroller, and said, oh my God, your, brother, your son's a monster. <laughs> you guys don't even know what my brother goes through on the daily. Another thing, he's not intimidated. He's unfazed, and you can tell by the swagger in his walk. Best believe that my younger brother, my younger brother Justin is 10 toes down, always was and forever will be. My brother Justin was born with front nasal dysplasia, which is a facial malformation that prohibits the body from producing this hard part in our nose right here. In the seventh grade, he received the surgery that he did not want to get. I still remember that day as if it was yesterday. We drove to Manhattan, cold, windy, stormy day. after two some odd hours or so. I remember the doctors pushing out my baby brother in a wheelchair, face completely bandaged up. You could only see his eyes, face swollen and bruised. 
we made eye contact and a tear streamed down the side of his face. I still get emotional before all my games. Justin, I just want to let you know that I know, I know that younger siblings look up to older siblings, but Justin, I look up to you. And I wouldn't be here without you. And I love you, Justin. At the end of freshman year, I could not wait to go home. I was the last in my friend group to get back to Jersey, and we were so excited to hang out with each other. And just hours before I got on my flight, hours, I woke up to a thousand missed calls and text messages, receiving words that one of my best friends, as well as his cousin, were shot and killed. That was the longest flight of my life. Attending the funeral was, was horrible. It felt like it was a movie, but it wasn't. The funeral was mournful. And afterwards, me and a few of my teammates went to Dada's house and had a conversation with his dad, Pastor Dyshawn Simpkins and Will Hill, a conversation that I will never forget. He passionately said to us, get your education, stay out of the streets, spread peace, love, and positivity. Make Dada proud. Make Dada proud. Dada was an amazing person, amazing. He could sing, he could rap, he could dance. And when we got to PC, our sole goal was to make sure that we play college football and to graduate. With me being a wide receiver and him being a cornerback, we compete against each other every single day to be great, tirelessly putting the hours in so that we can make our families proud. He literally got me here, and I wouldn't be here without him. I have his name written on my cleats, and every time I take the field, I just say, watch over me, bro, bro, I know you got me. <laughs> I know you got me. I'm gonna make you proud, Donna, don't worry, bro. I'm gonna make you proud. Since being at Stanford, my playing time has been limited. Battling a torn ligament in my thumb for two seasons, a torn muscle in my hip, a concussion. I learned that all these experiences just made me stronger, just made me hungrier. And I'm here to share my story today with all of you to let you know that God has a plan for each and every one of us in here today. One of my favorite Bible verses reads, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. <coughs> Typically after every practice, Coach Shaw would share some words of enlightenment with us. And there's something that always sticks with me. No matter what, make the next right decision. So I share my story with you all today to encourage you, to inspire you, to let you guys know that you can do it. You can be it. You can make it. Because above all else, you still have the tools to be the architect of your own world. Thank you.